Hey, what's up? This is DJ Shadow, and this is everything you need to know about me. Demo tapes, to me it's the inevitable end game if you are into collecting hip hop. I love hip hop, I consider myself a hip hop completist in terms of wanting to own every record that came out in the 80s and 90s. Demo tapes are where you hear artists, um, you know, kind of finding their voice. I guess I probably have, a f um, I don't know, about 400 or so, four to 500 now. One of the ones that I'm definitely most attached to is a, a Tribe Called Quest demo. It's basically all Q-tip beats, and there's a couple of unreleased tracks on that, um, and they're really good. And I think I have a tape that might be T.I.'s demo. He refers to himself as T.I.P., and he's a kid. His voice hadn't broke yet. It seems to make sense that it would be him, but until I meet T.I. and ask him about him, I really don't know. Building Steam with a Grain of Salt. It's a song that people refer to a lot. There's been so many things that I turned down through the years. I, re I remember in the late 90s, Apple asked me to be like appear in an ad. At that time, I was kind of following a mindset that this isn't why I make music, this isn't why I do what I do, and I didn't want to, you know, it, it felt like a sellout. There was another case uh, about a year later where there was an ad for Coke. I remember that Steve Martin was cast to be in it. And I was like, you know, all right, I'll do this one. I don't know why, I don't know if it's a good idea. But after turning down so many big, big opportunities, I was like, all right, this seems intriguing, we'll give it a shot. I managed to gain a reputation as somebody who doesn't do syncs. I've probably only managed to successfully consummate like 10% of the sync offers that have come my way. When it comes time to make an album, it can feel pretty daunting. I mean, it feels like you're looking up at this incredibly tall mountain and you just think to yourself, this is impossible, how can I do this? But then, um, you know, you start walking and you start working and a couple of weeks go by and you take a little break and you listen to what you've played and it kind of feels like you're kind of like maybe an eighth of the way up the mountain and you look down and you go, wow, okay, I've I've come this far and um, when I started this most recent album I, I tweeted that I was starting on the record and I tried to convey the, this analogy in my mind about the mountain. Somebody wrote back that would make a good album title. So that's, uh, that's where the title comes from. When I first put out a, a record um, it was totally out of sync with what was popular at the time. Just like everybody else, I was a huge fan of, you know, groups like Main Source at that time, and obviously Gangstar, Ultra Magnetic MCs. I mean, all, all these great groups I was a huge fan of. And even though I'm huge fans of all these producers and beat makers, I wasn't gonna be doing anybody any favors or hip hop music any favors by imitating someone else. You know, my early mentors were people like Jazzy J and, and Grandmaster Flash and Africa Islam. What I learned from DJs like that is to look outside of the traditional accepted uh, realms for your influence. Growing up on the West Coast, we received hip hop from everywhere. I was inspired by Bay Area hip hop, LA hip hop, Seattle hip hop, Houston hip hop, Miami hip hop, as well as New York hip hop, which we all knew that New York was where it started and where the culture was based. It was cool to be a part of all those things before the mainstream and actually before New York in a lot of ways. Well, he showed up on my show with a bag, like a paper bag, and told me that they were weed cookies, and I had never eaten, I've smoked weed, but I never ate a weed cookie, so I didn't know the difference. 